Happy Easter! Welcome to another Sunday School lesson. We are so glad to be with you here on this Easter Sunday. Isn't it so exciting? Easter is final year! Yeah. So we get to listen to a story today called The Empty Tomb. It has been a long week for Jesus. He had a really long week, but we are celebrating because Jesus' body wasn't there anymore. Can you believe it? I know, right? That's amazing. So he, the resurrection has happened. And so we are so excited to celebrate his resurrection today on this Easter Sunday. So the story we're going to listen to today in the Bible is called The Empty Tomb. And this story is actually coming from a book of Luke. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. And Luke is one of the four Gospels. What are they? Matthew, Mark, Mark Luke, Luke, and John. And all of these Gospels include what happened when the women went to visit the tomb. And all four writers wanted to tell everyone the great news. That's amazing, right? That Jesus yes. had been resurrected. We are so excited to hear this story today. Okay, let's listen. The empty tomb. Oh, here you can see the four women waiting. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun. The women didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way. Two others, Salome and Joanna, carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. Oh, they were so sad because they were coming to help Jesus with his body. Can you see their faces? I wonder how they were feeling knowing that they were going to have to go and take care of Jesus' body after he had died. How do you think they would feel? Sad. I think kind of sad. You can see their faces. They look really kind of sad, don't they? When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Uh-oh. They had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? The women kept going into the cave anyway, and as they came closer, the woman could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeked inside. Ooh, it was dark in there. Brr, it was cold in there. Drip, drop, it was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. Look at their faces now. Can you see what they look like now? How are they feeling? Surprised. They're super surprised. An angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. The glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. And the women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Can you imagine what they would look like? Don't be afraid, the angel said. What did he say? Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. <sighs> Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The women did not disobey. They ran to tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. Oh, who had they seen and heard from? An, An angel. angel. And he said, this is where dead people are. But Jesus is not dead. What did they say? He is alive. He is alive. Oof. Mary bumped into a man, tripped and fell at his feet. Wait, she knew those feet. A familiar hand reached out to help her. Wait, she knew that hand. She looked up. Yes, she knew that smile. It, it was, was Jesus. Jesus. <gasps> Hello, friends, Jesus said. Jesus really was alive. The women hugged his feet and shouted with joy. What did he say to them? Go tell the others the good news that I am alive, Jesus said. I will meet them in Galilee. I can't wait to see them again. <gasps> the women had a new job to do. They had to go tell everyone that Jesus was alive. <gasps> what a wonderful Easter morning. They got yes. there and they noticed his body wasn't in there. The angel is there and said, why are you looking for him? He's not dead, he's alive. And then who did they bump into when they were walking down the road? Jesus. Jesus himself. And he told them, he said, yes, go tell the others the good news, what? That I am alive. <gasps> that is so exciting. That is a wonderful Easter story to think. We knew it, but now we really know it after the women visited the cave and discovered he wasn't there, right? So hmm. do you ever think of things that maybe um, at Easter and at springtime when we see animals that change into something new? Yeah. Can you think of a little animal that we see hmm. that's crawling around and next thing you know you see it's flying around? A butterfly. A butterfly. How did it start out as? 
a caterpillar. caterpillar. That's right, it starts out as a caterpillar, but then all of a sudden you don't see the caterpillar anymore, but now we see a, a butterfly. butterfly. So when I think of caterpillars and I think of butterflies, I think of new life. I think of things that change, right? Yes. Just like Jesus did. We saw that he had died. We saw that and we read the stories about it in the Bible, but he wasn't really dead. He was alive, Yes. right? He was resurrected and so I thought, what a wonderful craft we could do to kind of remind us of Jesus and his resurrection. And the empty tomb is to make something that reminds us of new life, like butterflies. Have you seen yeah. any butterflies yet this spring? Um, not I yet. Seen, I haven't seen very many, but we will. They will be out and we will see them soon. So let's make a fun craft today to remind us of this Easter story. And let's go ahead and make some butterflies. Would that be fun to decorate our house with? Okay, yes. can you tell us what materials we will need? Cupcake liners. How many do you think we would need? Two. Okay, that's good. Um, a pipe cleaner. Oh, and a little bitty one. We don't need much, do we? Yes. Okay, or even string might work maybe. Okay, what else? A paper, a clip. A clothespin. Yeah, those are kind of funny, aren't they? Yes. Some tape. Good. And... I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's that it. looks good. You could use some markers or crayons if we want to decorate. Right? Okay, yes. so tell us what we want to do first. Okay. So you'll make your cupcake liner flat like this. Mm -hmm. And then you fold down the middle. Mm -hmm. Fold it in half. And then you do this. One more time. So yes. fold it and then fold it again. Okay, so it looks like this. So here, let's show them again. We started big. We fold it in half. And then we fold it one more time. So it's a quarter, it's one fourth of our cupcake liner, right? And how many do we wanna do that on two different ones, right? Yes. Okay, after we have this, what do you think we might wanna go ahead and do? We are gonna tape. You can, but before we tape it, we might wanna even decorate sometimes too, right? Ours are plain white. What if you had some special cupcake liners? They could be decorative, right? But if we have plain white ones, we could use markers or crayons and make some designs on it. But after we do that, we wanna tape them together and we wanna tape them kind of like a bow tie. Let me show, oh, there's a bow tie. <laughs> if we were gonna, oh, there's your bow tie. We can pretend it looks like a bow tie and we're just gonna put a little tape to put in between. Oh, that's tough tape it in. Okay, let's go ahead and tape those kind of in the middle. Perfect. There we go, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna tape it just like that. There we go, now it looks like a real bow tie, doesn't it? Okay, as soon as we have that taped, now what should we do next? Um, then we should use our clothespin. That's right. And you clip it. That's like right, this. just like that. Oh, it's already starting to look like a butterfly, isn't it? Okay, yes. what's the last thing you think our butterfly needs to see? His antennas. That's right. So how can we make the antennas? With the pipe cleaner, you can go like this. Oh, we'll make them kind of stand up. And, and then just open a teeny tiny bit with your clothespin. And there we go. Oh, there's our butterfly. Oh, I like it. Or as we can call it, a flutterby. <laughs> I like our butterfly. Where do you think we could put that in our house to remind us about the story of Easter? Is there um, somewhere you think we could keep it? Hmm. Like, hmm. Maybe somewhere where we spend a lot of time. Maybe like the dinner table. Yes. Or near the mantle in our living room. Something like that, a place where we can remind ourselves of Jesus's story, right? Yeah. Of him, where he is alive. Just like we think about a caterpillar, how it changes into a butterfly. We can remember, Jesus is not dead. I know we saw that with our eyes or we read it in the Bible, but that is not anymore. Jesus is alive. We are so excited. And it reminds me, every time I see a butterfly, I think of the Easter story. So then we can have our little butterflies around our house to tell our story. We might even be able to give these to other friends, right? And yes. tell them the story about Easter. Oh, well, maybe we could send some to friends and family. Happy Easter. Jesus is alive. We are so excited and we are so glad that we got to be here with you today to read this story and yes. make this special craft to remind us of Easter. Yes. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Bye. Hi, happy Easter. Well, last time we were together, we talked about Jesus going into the city of Jerusalem. And if you remember, it was kind of like a parade. He was riding on the back of a donkey. People were actually laying their cloaks down and they were calling him 
pretty much a king. And do you remember there was someone that, so a group of people that did not like that. Do you remember who it was? The Pharisees and the teachers, that's right. And they wanted Jesus to tell the people, no, that's wrong, stop. And Jesus, do you remember what his response was? Well, if the people don't talk, the rocks will cry out. Well, it's a week later. Do you remember what's happened? So Jesus has died on the cross, right? So he went in and it was a celebration. He was arrested. Remember, one of the disciples betrayed him. Judas betrayed him in the garden. He was arrested, taken to trial, and the Roman soldiers, they crucified him. So Jesus died on the cross on Friday. And now it's Easter. It's three days later. What's so special about Easter? Well, if you told me, hang on, we're going to read and see if you're right. So we are still in the book of Luke. We're in chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. You ready? Here we go. On the first day of the week. So it's not like, you know how we think Monday morning you start school? The first day of the week is Sunday. So we know it's Sunday, right? Uh, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Now, um, back then, you know, a long time ago, there were special things that uh, people did when someone died. And usually it fell to the women to do that. That was their role. And they would, kind of, I guess we would say, prepare the body with spices and oils and different things. But when Jesus died uh, on Friday, it was very late and he was just put into the tomb as is. And you know, there's a big stone rolled in front. Remember we talked about, like you always hear about that, the big stone that was rolled. Uh, I've heard that someplace I heard it would actually take like two grown men to move it. It was so big and so heavy. So the women were going to, to do their job, which was to prepare Jesus's body. Okay. All right. So they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Do you think that surprised them? Because it was super heavy. Why would it be moved? Who would bother the body? That doesn't really make sense, right? Let's see. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Where was he? Do you think they were confused? Probably. It had to be so hard to go and be preparing yourself in your mind to, to see someone you loved that had passed away, but they were kind of giving him like a farewell gift of, of these oils and different things. And, and they go and he's not there. Let's see what happens next. You ready? While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning can you imagine how bright that would be? Because, you know, we'll see a flash of lightning and it's so bright. Can you imagine someone dressed in something and the robes were so bright that it looked like lightning? I would imagine that was kind of scary. It may even hurt their eyes a little bit, right? So two men uh, in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. So remember, when they went into the tomb, because the stone wasn't there, so they went in and Oh, do you guys know what a tomb looks like? Think of a small cave. Easiest way I can think of to think of it. Just think of a cave. Okay, so they went in. No one was there when they went walked in, right? Because they would have mentioned these two men. They can't find Jesus. Jesus. They walk out and then there's these two men. Let's see what happens. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. I guess they were just so scared. The only thing they could think to do was just look down and maybe try to be small, maybe? Let's find out. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Now, by accounts, the women were there when he was crucified. They saw that he had died. They would have been nearby when he was taken to the tomb. They know he had passed away. They know he was dead. So 
this seems kind of strange for these men that, with these strange clothes to say, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised. Now, interesting. Once these men, angels maybe, reminded these women, all of a sudden they remembered that lesson Jesus had taught them. All along, Jesus knew this was probably the path for him. This was what would have to happen. And at one point, he even asked God, if there's any other way, could we not do this? But if this is what we need to do, I'm prepared. It's, it, I'll do it, which was you know, to die, right? So he'd been telling people. And for hundreds of years, it had been written down and then passed mouth to mouth orally that this was going to happen that the, the Christ would die and then be raised from the dead. So they all knew it, but I think sometimes we get so focused on where we are that we forget the big picture of everything. So let's see what happens. So, uh, so this is what Jesus had taught them in a different town in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Now. That's kind of what's happened, right? Last week we talked about how he came in, he announced that he was pretty much God's son, is what he announced on his way in. And we know that one of the 12, that Judas betrayed him and turned him over to the Pharisees and the Roman guards, right? And he must be delivered into the hands of sinful be crucified. So that was a spe very specific way that he was going to have to die. And that's what happened on the cross. And on the third day be raised again. Well, I wonder if the women even realized how many days it had been since he passed when, he, when they went to the tomb. I wonder if they were thinking, will he be there or not? Obviously they weren't. They forgot about this story. They were just they were grieving. They were so sad and upset and angry that he was gone, right? So let's see what happens. When they come back from the tomb, so the ladies got all this news and went back to where the men were, right? So when they came back from the tomb, let's see, they told all of these things to the 11 and to the others. Well, who are the 11? Remember, we usually think of the 12 disciples, right? The 12 the fishermen that, that Jesus called to them, follow me, right? That's who we think of as the 12 disciples that he taught and they traveled with him. Why is it only 11? Now, remember Judas betrayed him. So he's not one of the 12 disciples anymore. Now there's 11. So um, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. And this actually tells us who the women were. Because remember back then, unfortunately, it was just different. And the men were kind of in charge. Um, and so the women didn't really count. They, they didn't. It was just different. I'll leave it at that. So it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles, who told this to the 12 disciples. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Now, this is interesting because these weren't just strangers that came and told the 11 disciples. These were women that they knew, that had traveled with them, that they had a bond with, right? And they couldn't believe what the women were saying. I think it was just like when the women went to the tomb and saw that it was empty, it didn't click for them what Jesus had told them in Galilee that I'm going to die and then I'm going to come back. They weren't thinking of the bigger picture. They were just so focused on their grief, right? So let's see. Um, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. So back then, 
they would actually wrap the body in thin pieces of, oh, kind of like bed sheets, like strips, kind of think of them like, yeah. Was, what came to mind really quickly was like a Halloween costume. A mummy, if you wrapped yourself with like toilet paper or something like that, that was the visual that came to mind. So I'm just gonna share it. So uh, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. So he still couldn't process it. It was just too big. Have you ever had that happen where um, maybe something happens and, and you, you just are so focused that maybe, uh, I was trying to think if, Do you have any ideas? Have you ever had something happen that you couldn't stop thinking about it, but there was something bigger and more important, right? That's what's happening here. The disciples, they had to have been so sad and heartbroken. They were so focused on their grief that they just didn't see the bigger picture. And that's what Easter is about. And this is what we celebrate. We celebrate that Jesus died and then he rose from the dead. Everything that was talked about for hundreds of years, for centuries before Jesus was born, about this was gonna happen, this happened. And that is the exciting news of Easter, is this rebirth, right? Jesus died and he came back. And that's where we're gonna to stop today. I hope you get to go on an Easter egg hunt. I hope you've had a great time. Unfortunately, I'm filming this before Easter, so I'm really hoping the weather's nice. Have a great time. Happy Easter, bye.